sphere. Five points are placed on the surface of the sphere. Prove that some four of them must be contained in some closed hemisphere. And wonderful question. To start with, you're not going to see this in the cat. You're not going to ask, be asked a question. Prove that. And so based on a fabulous idea. For those of you who have not tried this, try this. This is based on one wonderful concept, pigeon hole principle. It's an extraordinary idea. You'll read this pigeon hole principle after you Google this. And then you'll realize that, look, this is just common sense. These mathematicians have got nothing on them. That they've taken common sense and they're calling it a giant principle. With the beauty in pigeon hole principle, it helps you redefine a phenomenal number of really challenging questions and give fabulously elegant proofs. And so read up on pigeon hole principle because it will definitely not get asked in your cat. But you could do far worse than reading this in any set of 20 minutes you have in your life. So it takes 20 minutes. Read that. You'll have fun. Right? Now let's back, get back to the question. Five points are placed on the surface of the sphere. Prove that some four of them must be contained in a hemisphere. This seems intuitive enough. You have a sphere. It's not, not intuitive, but if I have five points somewhere on the surface, but I have five points like this. And you can imagine that I should be able to carve out a sphere. These, these two beam close by, this close by. So I can create and carve out some hemisphere. And so maybe I can carve out a hemisphere like this, where these four will be in one half. Or I can carve out something like this, where these four will be on half. And remember, it's not a circle. This is a sphere. So there is a surface angle to it. There's a three-dimensional angle to it. And so you can say, look, I can only cut like this. But this can be curved and cut along this axis as well. Remember that it's a three-dimensional shape. And so, how do we prove this? We have a sphere like this. How do you prove some sphere like this? There's a point on the surface here. There's a point somewhere here. On the surface here. On the surface here. On the point here. How do we prove that we can carve it into a hemisphere? That will definitely have four. I'm not necessarily having to cut through this. I can cut the hemisphere part anywhere. But you want to prove that some four of them must be contained in some closed hemisphere. Closed hemisphere, including all the endpoints of the hemisphere. And wonderful. It's a really, really intriguing question. A fabulous question. The proof for this question is absolutely delightful. Absolutely delightful. And how do we do this? Well, you have five points here. Proof goes very simply. Pick some two points. Through these two points, you can draw a circle. You cannot draw just any circle. You can draw what is called as a great circle. What do you mean by a great circle? A great circle is a circle that has this as a center. Simple, wonderful. What do you mean by that? So any two points on the sphere will be equidistant from this point. The two points on the sphere and this point are in one plane. With this as center, draw a circle covering those two points you can draw a circle brilliant so out of our five points we have used two and drawn a circle if you draw it if you pick any three points you can draw one circle but if you pick these three points you'll draw a circle around uh, on, on this plane here cut off something imagine cutting off the polar caps of the earth cutting off a circle and on, on, on right at the top imagine an ice cream ball ice cream being opened up you're doing something like that but i'm not saying we're doing that we're not picking three points you're picking some two but drawing what is called as a great circle a great circle is some circle which for which it is which which lies on the surface of the sphere not just that the center of that circle will be the center of the sphere itself it's the largest possible circle that can be carved out from a sphere let's say you carve it out like this so there's been a point here on the surface and here on the surface. So we accounted for two points. Now comes the beauty of this proof. There are three points remaining. And there are two hemispheres. The three points can be distributed as 3 and 0. Or 2 and 1. Or 0 and 3. Or 1 and 2. In some form. Or there will be at least one hemisphere. That has at least two. If I can put either two here. And one here. Or the other way around. If I put two here and one here, this hemisphere has four points. If I put two on the bottom and one on the top, this hemisphere will have four. If I put all three on the top, that will have five points. Proved. Brilliant. Where is the pigeonhole principle angle to it? We have three points to be put into two hemispheres. There will be at least one hemisphere that has at least two points. 
you put one here you put one here the third one has to go in one of these two that's the pigeon hole principle angle to this absolutely delightful question fine so rearranging rejigging this question and 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 solving it and rephrasing it and imagining a sphere is delightful and one of my uh, I, i i i i stumbled quite a while i did not get the answer to this question so i checked it out uh, but it's a beautiful question right?